GA Recap Monday. I hope you guys are having a fantastic, magical, wonderful, amazing start to your week. Um, I've had better. Uh, um, Friday night I was driving and it was late and I um, was running an errand and I got ran into a concrete barrier. Um, sounds worse than it was. Could have been a lot worse. I was very lucky. Um, I wasn't going insanely fast. I was only going maybe about 45, but it was fast enough and I hit I hit at the right angle that it actually deployed my airbag. Um, so that sucked. Um, I got some whiplash. I didn't go to the hospital or anything. I had a little bit of a burn on my hand. You can kind of still see it from the airbag. Um, other than that, I came out pretty unscathed. I was pretty shook up. I'd really never been in a wreck like that. I mean, I had, but it's it had been like a long time and it just... It, like I forgot kind of how scary that all is and so um it was just it was just creepy like I just didn't oh um it worked me out pretty good but I'm okay my car not so much it's totaled and gone um so now I'm like in the whole like car shopping thing Ugh. like you could gag me and I'd be happier um but I know it'll all work out I'm going to look at something today, fingers crossed that it'll all work out. I have a car that I'm driving for the moment. My grandma let me use hers for a couple of days until I could find something. And so I know it'll all work out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's just another thing on my proverbial plate of crap that I have to deal with. But I will be fine. It happens every day. People wreck cars all the time and get new cars all the time. And so it will all work out and it will all be fine. Anyway, we are not here to talk about weekend craziness or new cars. We are here for GA Recap Monday, where I recap the newest episode of Ghost Adventures, or in this case, Ghost Adventures Aftershocks. And I am so excited. This week on Aftershocks, they covered one of my favorite locations of all time, which is Waverly Hills Sanatorium. And so we are going to be saving that recap for last, because of course you always save the best for last. But we are going to get started with Bachelors Grove Cemetery. Now, Bachelors Grove Cemetery is located outside of Chicago. And it is creepy on several factors. First of all, it's a cemetery. Second of all, it's abandoned. Um, meaning that no one like buries their, their loved ones there anymore. It's out in the woods. It's just crazy. Like, it's in the middle of the forest reserve. And it's just insanity. Like, I love it for that reason because it's got the extra, like, creep factor about being, you know, kind of desolate and out in the middle of nowhere. But it's really, really dark out there. And I don't mean, like, by light. It's just, it's sinister. It's just kind of creepy. Um, it's got a high security presence because it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's like the perfect dumping ground. For an episode of like Dateline. I mean, it's just insane. It's just, huh, gives me the chills thinking about it. And when the guys went back there and went there in 2012, they, on their investigation, experienced a ball of light. And if you remember the Hoyubachu forest in Romania, the red ball of light that Billy and Zach experienced in the forest, this was very similar, except the fact that it was white. Um, at first, the guys thought it was the perimeter guards, you know, with their flashlights. But they then they realized that it was hovering about three feet off the ground. It was making no noise whatsoever. It was just this ball of light. And then it began kind of tracking them, you know, the guys, kind of watching the guys kind of move around. And so it was following them. And so they knew instantly then that it was not something like a flashlight or a person. Um, Joe Shuckster was the lead security and sheriff at the time of the show he's now since retired and he came in to do his interview and he disclosed some information about the cemetery that is a little disheartening to say the least um things that he couldn't talk about while he was on the force because he doesn't want to attract attention to a place they're trying to keep people out of all the time um so while he was on the force he experienced a couple of things there was a man um, who was going out to the end of Bachelor's Grove 
road, I guess, and kind of jutting back up to the north a little bit and dumping bodies. Now, not only was he dumping bodies, but he was dumping bodies of children. What? Like, why? Like, I don't understand. An innocent child being killed is sad enough, but an innocent child being killed and then being dumped on the side of the road like a piece of garbage is even sadder. And it was just horrible to even hear about. Um, another thing that would happen up there is they would, people would tie wire between trees and then send people into the woods and scare the living crap out of them. And once you get to running and you hit wire, one of two things is going to happen. Um, you're going to bounce off of it like a coin, which is very rare. Um, or you're going to, you know, depending on your height, you're going to get axed one way or another. Um, either here or here. And nothing comes, nothing good comes out. Like, who wakes up and does that? Like, who wakes up one morning and is like, I'm going to go tie wire between two trees and, uh, you know, see how it goes. Like, what? really? Like, I am all about blowing up, like, super mutants with a mini nuke and fallout. Like, I'm all about that. Like, I live for the cha-ching. If you're a Fallout fan, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, stop watching this video, do your research, play some Fallout, and then get back to me. Um, I live for that. Any Fallout fan does. Like, it's just, you know, ching you're happy and you know good things are, are happening. Um, never would I ever put that into real life. That is my legal way of de-stressing. Like, if I am just in a bad mood and I want to kill somebody... I'll do it on the video game. I would never in my life do it in real life. I don't, I don't know what goes through someone's head. I've never understood the mind of a serial killer or the mind of someone who just, just wakes up one day and decides to kill somebody or hire somebody to kill somebody. Like, I don't understand how you could be that cold, that sinister, that evil, that malevolent. I just don't understand it. Um, I understand video games all day long. I don't understand how people take that into real life. It just boggles my mind and leaves me going, what the? what it just boggles my mind i i understand that people are legitimately batshit crazy like there are people who are absolutely clinically insane their brains do not function the same way or right at all and they just lose their mind but to take it so far as to kill an innocent child or to take wire and decapitate somebody for the fun of it i just don't understand it and when joe disclosed all of that i was like that explains so much like at least you know there's some like history to why it would be the way it is. Now also with Bachelor's Grove Cemetery is one of hands down the best pieces of paranormal evidence ever captured ever in the history of time. Oh my god. In 1991 a woman named Judy was doing paranormal research in its infancy in Bachelor's Grove Cemetery. She snapped a picture using one of the first probably roles ever of infrared film that she happened to find like in a specialty shop in Chicago and when she got the pictures back there was a woman sitting on a tombstone now it was not a mist it was not a form it was a full-bodied apparition paranormal gold you could see her clothes see her hair see the flowers in her hair see her face it to anybody's naked eye it would be the perfect photoshop however this photo and its negative have both been analyzed by, by several professional photo analysts and it was even analyzed on the episode of Aftershocks in front of us and has been proved to be 110% legitimate. So this woman has paranormal gold in her hands. Very few people can capture a full bodied apparition on camera period um, or film and very, very, very few people can catch one as good as that one is. It is amazing to see, it is amazing to look at. She's an extremely lucky person to have it, and if she ever gets rid of it, she's an idiot. Because it is absolute paranormal gold. Um, and it's just amazing that you can capture something like that um, even back in its infancy. And to think about the technology that we have now and can't always capture something like that, to capture something like that then is just unbelievably excited. So I'm really excited that they went back to Bachelor's Grove and kind of caught up with everybody um, to relive because it was a really good episode and um, it just they got really good evidence and to have it analyzed and you know kind of authenticated like that is just insane. 
But now we are going to get to my favorite part of this video, which is where I get to talk about Waverly Hills and probably go on a little bit of a rant, to be honest. Um, Waverly Hills Sanatorium is in Kentucky, and for those of you who don't know what Waverly Hills is, again, quit watching this video, do your research, and get back to me, because you are not a paranormal fan at all if you do not know what Waverly Hills Sanatorium is. Waverly Hills Sanatorium was a tuberculosis hospital in the height of the tuberculosis epidemic. Thousands of people have died there. Thousands of people have called at home. Thousands of people have gotten better there. It's iconic batwing design is very common in tuberculosis hospitals because they believed that the design could help airflow get through fresh air made you better and it was just the way that they did things back then a lot of the sanatoriums at the height of the tuberculosis epidemic had that bat wing design waverly hills being one of the most iconic in history now where i go on a little bit of a rant recently it's come out in the news that waverly hills is going to be turned into a haunted hotel what the F? No, this is not okay with me. And I said a little bit, bit of a rant. I lied. It's going to be a big rant. Waverly Hills is such an iconic location. It is haunted for a reason. It is haunted because it's creepy. It is haunted because it's desolate. It's haunted because it's abandoned. And it's haunted because of the history. Now, if you go in there and start splashing paint all up on the walls and putting new carpet in and making it all pretty... You are taking away the uh, you're taking away the authentic atmosphere of the location. You're taking away the creepy factor. You're turning it into an episode of The Shining, and I'm not okay with it. And I guarantee you, the spirits aren't gonna be okay with it either. I'm just saying. Huh? <sighs> this is where I'm getting sassy because I don't like it. I think it's junk. I can't even get into the interview yet because I needs to go on a rant. It's crap. You are going to ruin it and you're going to piss them off because they're probably already mad on occasion that you come in there anyway, even though there's not really a lot of documented dark, dark, super dark, horribly dark hauntings, doesn't mean that there can't be and doesn't mean that there's not something dormant. And if you start ripping up floorboards and painting walls, you are only leaving yourself to unearth something horrible and it's God only knows what it'll be. And... So you, you need to just back off and leave it alone. And I have a feeling based on the interview I seen in the episode that the people that they interviewed maybe have something to do with that hotel, ho like, like the whole hotel situation. I don't know for sure, but I'm only guessing. I haven't read a lot of research into it because I don't care to. I think it's crap that they're doing it. But anyway, Zach interviewed Tina and Charlie Mattingly who own the sanatorium and they've been part of it for about 14 years they've lived there for the last five and it's starting to affect them I think negatively a little bit um they are completely addicted to the place they didn't even want to come to the interview because they didn't want to leave Waverly Hills and Charlie it for Charlie it's personal his dad was a resident at Waverly Hills he didn't have tuberculosis but his family lost their home in a flood and Waverly Hills took him in and kind of saved his life. And when his dad died, he promised him he would restore it to its former glory. It used to be a beautiful place. You could see the floors. It was super clean, super well maintained. And so I think that that's their goal. But it's such a big place for two people to do that I can't even begin to imagine where they would even start. And maybe that's why they're doing the, ho the, like, the whole hotel thing, but I'm still not okay with that. Um... And when I say it's starting to affect them negatively, Charlie has a pacemaker defibrillator. Um, one slows your heart down, one speeds it up. And having a defibrillator is no fun. Like, I know people who have them, and shocking your heart will bring you to your knees. It's just ridiculous. And Charlie was getting shocked so much that his defibrillator went bad in two years. Those batteries usually last for like five to seven. So the fact that it went bad after two years just shows you how much activity he's experiencing. And I think that the spirits are manipulating his defibrillator to make contact with him. Not necessarily maybe to hurt him, but to make contact with him. And it's just not okay. It's going to end up killing him. And along with the other activity that goes on there, you know, it's famous for doppelgangers. I got to say that word. I love the word doppelganger. If anybody knows me well enough, they know that that word makes me smile. Uh, because it's one of those words that sounds dirty, but it's not. It's like doppelganger. Like, it's just... Oh, it, it makes me giggle 
every time just to say it. And for those of you who don't know what a doppelganger is, a doppelganger is a double. So it is where a spirit will manipulate um, someone who's alive and they will take their form. And it said that if you see your own doppelganger, so like if I was walking along and I seen a spirit that looked like me, that I would die. So they're not exactly the best thing to see, but it's the best word ever invented. I love the fact. I just love the word doppelganger. I'm sorry. I'm such an idiot. I know. But Tina has seen Charlie's, you know, spirit or the like Charlie's doppelganger and Charlie's seen Tina's, but they've never seen their own, which is a good thing. Um, but it's just, it's just still scary and unknown and messed up. And so I think that it's best that they probably get away from it, but I know that they never will because if it's that personal to them, they'll never leave and then they'll never change it. And so it'll be really interesting to see what happens to Waverly Hills, but I am still not okay with the fact that they're turning it into a haunted hotel. I think it's crap. And I think that they need to leave it alone and they need to leave it creepy and they need to leave it run down and they need to leave it the way it is. You know, keep it safe enough for people to still go in there and do like investigations and crap, but don't be making it all pretty and giving it like feather down pillows and crap and continental breakfast on a Saturday morning because all you're gonna do is take away the authenticity of it and take away the creepy factor and piss off a bunch of dead people which we all know never works out because when they flock together and get together they start having like secret meetings and crap where they're all like you know what they're messing with my home and so now I'm gonna mess with them and make their lives hell so who's in and I can guarantee you about a thousand people are gonna go me because they don't want it to be a hotel any more than I do just saying steps off soapbox drops the mic walks away deuces just saying oh <sighs> but anyway that is all i have for ga recap monday i will be back on wednesday for gaqa what should i do wednesday where i answer all of your general paranormal related questions as well as all of your ghost adventures related questions that you guys ask me all up on the Facebook page. So start getting me those questions. And now if you haven't done so already, I already have a few and I'm looking for a few more. So get them into me today or tomorrow and I will answer them in my video on Wednesday. Until then, stay happy, stay healthy, stay warm. It is cold AF outside. It is the tundra. Until then, I will see you Wednesday. Bye!